Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at the laws of logarithms, but specifically how we can prove these laws. Okay, so we better start by recapping what are the laws of logarithms. We've got three that we're looking at in particular. That the log of a times b is equal to log a plus log b. That the log of a divided by b is log a minus log b. And that the log of a to the power of p is equal to p times by log a. Okay, those are the three laws. We're going to go through them in turn. Let's start with the first, right? Log a b is equal to log a plus log b. Now, before I start, it's important to, to state that in order for these laws to work, we assume that the bases are all the same, right? So I'm going to call all of the bases there n, but just for shorthand, very often, or when we're saying the law, we just ignore the base because uh, it makes it easier to say. But you've got to remember the bases have to be the same. Now, in order to do this proof, uh, what we've got to do is we've got to define two dummy variables, right? And we're going to take uh, these things here, log a and log b, and call them x and y respectively, right? So log a is x and log b is y, uh, as I've shown here. Now, if I take these, I can actually rewrite them, I can rearrange them into exponential form, right? So if I take the first one and I rearrange that, I will get a is equal to n to the power of x. And I can rearrange the, the second one and I get b is equal to n to the power of y. Okay, just double check for yourself that, that that is indeed true. Now, if that's the case, what I can do is I can multiply these two together. Right? I will get a times b is equal to nx times by ny. And of course, nx times ny is n to the power of x plus y, because I just add up the powers, right? as we learned a few weeks ago. Well, now, if that's the case, Right, that a times b is equal to n to the power of x plus y, I can convert that back into logarithmic form. If I convert it back into logarithmic form, what I should get is that the log of a times by b, or rather, sorry, log base n of a b is equal to x plus y. Right. Again, I've just rearranged from exponential form back to logarithmic form. Well, we know, don't we, that x and y are log a and log b. So I can now rewrite this and say the log base n of a b is equal to log base n a plus log base n b. And there we go. We've proved our first rule. OK, so what's the key to this? You take the log A and log B and call them X and Y respectively, rearrange into exponential form, multiply them together and go back into logarithmic form. And we're going to do the exact same thing, actually, with the second rule. Log A divided by B is equal to log A minus log B, right? Same thing. I'm going to take these two things here, log A and log B, and call them X and Y like that. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to convert these into exponential form. So again, over here, a is equal to n to the power of x, and b is equal to n to the power of y. And now I'm going to take a and I'm going to divide it by b. So a divided by b will be n to the x divided by n to the y. And of course, if I'm dividing, then I can just subtract the powers. So I get n to the power of x minus y. And having got that, I can just go back and convert into logarithmic form, right? So instead of a divided by b is equal to n to the power of x minus y, I can say that the log base n of a divided by b must equal x minus y. And again, we know that x is log a and y is log b, so I can now rewrite the law in full that the log base n of a divided by b is equal to the log base n of a minus the log base n of b. Okay, so that's the second law that has been proved in very similar ways to the first. So the final rule. The log of a to the power of p, sorry, I beg your pardon, there's a typo there, a to the power of p is equal to p times by log a. And actually, in order to prove this rule, all you've got to do is you've got to remember the first rule, right, that log a b is log a plus log b. Why is that? Well, if you think about this, what is log of a to the power of p? How can I rewrite a to the power of p? 
Well, a to the power of p is this thing here, isn't it? It's a times a times a times a times a times a. And how many times are you doing that? You're doing that p times. Well, if that's the case, then from our earlier rule that log a times b is log a plus log b, then what I've actually got here is I've got log a plus log a plus log a plus dot 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 log a. And how many times have I got that? Well, again, I'm going to have it p number of times, right? Because if I've got a times a times a times a at the top, then if I just apply the logarithmic rule, then I'm going to have log a plus log a plus log a p number of times. And of course, log a plus log a plus log a p number of times is just p times by log a. And so that's the third rule, the final rule. It's actually the easiest to prove. Okay, guys, now, as always, it is very helpful for you to know why the rules exist and how to derive them. If you're seeking to be competent, particularly in additional maths, you don't just want to memorize the rules and to know how to apply them, but you want to be able to get beneath the rules and to understand why they work. So what I would encourage you to do is to look through this video again, turn it off, and then try to prove the rules to yourself again. You probably won't be able to do it first time. Then go back, watch the video, and try to prove it to yourself again. And get into the habit, maybe once every couple of days, and then once every couple of weeks or months, try to remember how you can prove the rules. I think if you do this, your competency in logarithms will shoot through the roof. So it is time well spent. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful. As I always hope it was helpful. I will see you again next time.